Joining me now from London is Richard Johnson, an American politics specialist at Queen Mary University. Thank you very much for your time. It's very much still early days yet in the presidential election campaign, but is it going to be a smooth ride for Donald Trump to win that nomination later in the year? I've been trying to look at the different paths that his challenges could take to overcoming Trump, and I have to say that it looks to me like the Republican nomination contest may already be virtually over. The strongest challenge could come from Nikki Haley if she performs very well in New Hampshire and performs well in South Carolina, her home state. But I will say that the polling that we've had out of South Carolina so far, and there hasn't been as much from South Carolina, admittedly, has put her as far as 25 or 30 points behind Donald Trump. So I think unless unless she really pulls a rabbit out of a hat next week in New Hampshire, and we and there's a momentum in South Carolina that's been building that hasn't been picked up in the polls, then I think the most likely uh, path here is that Trump is going to win the these next few contests, and then we have Super Tuesday in early March, and it looks and Trump is leading in the polls in those states as well. So. I think it's quite likely that by the start of March, uh, it'll be mathematically almost impossible for any challenger to overtake Donald Trump for the nomination. But what does it mean in terms of the legal challenges that he's currently facing? Well, those legal challenges are mostly going to kick off after the Super Tuesday um, uh, voting takes place. So it is quite likely that um, Trump... Be before any trials actually begin, in, uh, any of the criminal trials begin properly, Trump will probably already be the de facto crowned Republican nominee. Um, and I think this has been one of the uh, strategies of his lawyers is to try as hard as they can to push back the start of those trials as, as far as they can through appeals and challenges and so on, um, at least to get him through to Super Tuesday. And that looks like they're probably going to succeed in that. Uh, in fact, is Donald Trump the candidate the Democrats actually want? I mean, will it make their campaigning that much easier, as in vote for us, to keep Trump out of the White House? There is that argument, and that argument is built around two ideas. One is that the uh, there's this, a chunk of people who are Republican voters, people who still say they would they would vote Trump at this stage, but might not vote for him if he had a conviction uh, against a criminal conviction against his name, which he might well do uh, before November. Um, the, the second is that actually, from the perspective of Republicans, this isn't going to change much. This is all baked in, but it helps to unify the urgency of the non-Trump vote in the country to rally behind Joe Biden to prevent Trump from winning. One of the dangers of the Biden candidacy is actually uh, Biden support fragmenting and people looking at third party options um, or, or not turning out to vote. And that could, you know, if you look back at 2016, that was actually really what sank it for Hillary Clinton, uh, was that there was a higher than usual uh, share of people voting for the Greens and the Libertarians in a few of those key swing states. Now, these aren't huge numbers. These are single digits, but in very tight contests, which is what I expect the contest in November to be, uh, if you haven't got your full coalition on side, uh, then, then that can prove fatal. So um, in that sense, if Biden can rally together and unify people behind uh, the kind of non-Trump vote behind Joe Biden, uh, then perhaps he is the candidate they want to face, but it's a high-risk strategy. Richard uh, Johnson, thank you so much. Thank you.